Hello everyone, my name is Agnieszka Płonka and I am recording this video for the virtual free market road show. I am currently interested in how propaganda works, in the psychology of tyranny and the psychology of liberty. And my topic for today is indeed psychological because I will talk about how free societies deal better with the unpredictable. Of course, you can approach the word deal in this sentence in many ways, with reference to the current pandemic, with reference to economical factors in general or judiciary responses, and each of these is a topic for a separate video. A lot of times you are facing a knowledge problem kind of situation, so in complex systems that are suddenly disrupted, we need a decentralization and freedom to choose in order to figure out the best approach are a number of different approaches that work for different people. It is generally favorable if solutions to a problem that is yet unknown compete with each other. Of course, lately we have been facing a lot of heated debate concerning these solutions in the pandemic content, which is understandable given the novelty and the possible tragic outcomes and trade-offs. A lot about these topics has been said and exemplified on fmrs.online so make sure to check it out however what i'm about to say when i say that free societies deal better with the unpredictable i will look at the word deal from an individual's perspective so to quote the classic margaret thatcher who is society there is no such thing there are individual men and women and there are families so we know the context of this quote, and it was concerned with where the aid that we would receive should come from, and namely from ourselves. And what I mean by societies dealing better, I mean people dealing better. So in a relatively free society with long-standing rule of law, my mental health is better, and I am better equipped to deal with the unpredictable. And it's not just because I have more material resources but also because I'm in control of my life. I am responsible for myself, so I can further this responsibility, take initiative. For example, as an entrepreneur who is faced with difficult decisions to shift or cease production, nowadays to transfer to the health sector, it all comes from my own agency as a human being, and ultimately it's done because I exercise the power to do it. And then, well, in relative freedom, these decisions will help a number of people in my community or even uh, on larger scale because I need consumers to value my work in order to keep doing it. So that's a very basic picture, but we can actually dig deeper into the mindset and psychology of liberty and of tyranny. So what I think is true is that there are two extreme ways to treat another human being and we exist on a spectrum of how we treat other people, how the state treats us, the po how the political system treats us. We can either treat another human being, that's one extreme end of that spectrum, as an object. So, you are just my pawn. You are just an object, a puppet doll that I will use for my own gain. And if I don't need you anymore, I will throw you away. And I can argue that I'm using you for some kind of greater good that in the end doesn't exist and will backfire. But I am just objectifying you. You're not a human being to me. That's one extreme end of that spectrum. On another end, there is respect. There is empathy and there is space for freedom and personal development. So you are a valued individual. You have separate aspirations and desires and means of flourishing in the Aristotelian sense. And I recognize your intrinsic value as a human being. Those are the two ends of the spectrum. How does the state treat us? Most cases, somewhere in between. But... The more we approach the objectifying end of the spectrum, the worse it gets. Also, I have to point out that it's not just on political scale, uh, because it, it also works in families, in working environments, and in our everyday life. 
So this objectifying end of the spectrum, that's something that exists in toxic relationships, which result in trauma and impaired sense of self. And after this, it's hard to take control and initiative over your own life if you have been objectified by someone. But I argue that it works the same for political systems, because ultimately we are all just people interacting with each other. If we look again at that extreme end of, of the spectrum, this objectifying end, and we think about the 20th century and all the totalitarism and, and centrally planned economies, it is an uninspiring story of wasted lives, of traumas, of people living under command and forsaking whatever hopes they had for their own life. A good research ground here is comparing Eastern and Western Germany. So one of the studies, Personal Initiative at Work, it was conducted in 1996 by Freze. He compared Eastern and Western Germans in the workplace, showing that in the East, managers had to actively find on their own if a certain task were, was done. Because people were more dependent, they were less self-reliant, less achievement-oriented, and less focused and persistent in their goals. They didn't have the sense that their own thoughts were important and that they mattered. And these differences between the East and the West, they were shown to be robust and they were shown to be extreme for the most driven people. So 13% of Easterners versus 35% of Westerners were shown to have high initiative. Another study deal, dealt with problems that are even deeper and physical. So in 1993, Bauer researched psychological and hormonal abnormalities in refugees from Eastern Germany. And he showed how prolonged stress affects your hormones. The refugees had more depressive and anxiety disorders, including post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. And they also had thyroid problems that were linked to chronic stress. So this is just one example. Of course, we can differentiate between different dictatorships, groups, and experiences. But an important simple note that needs to be said is tyranny is emotionally abusive, and it is bad for your mental health. So we are talking a lot, generally speaking, about economic damage caused by centrally planned economies. Last year, we did celebrate 30 years of the fall of uh, the Berlin Wall, and a lot of economical and judicial differences, they have been smoothed out, at least in the countries that managed to install some form of the rule of law. But what is mostly persistent now, it is not an economic issue. In fact, while many argue that Eastern Germany should not be distinguishable from Western Germany now, if the difference was just economical in the first place. After all, Western Germany recovered way more swiftly after, after the war than Eastern Germany did after the fall of the wall. So the answer is psychological, in fact, and it is the effect of prolonged trauma on, hu on the human mind. That's what it's about right now, and that is what is the most persistent and most dehumanizing problem now. So in the end, it is the mindset that will take the longest to heal. So imagine that nothing that you choose in your life matters, that you are detached from the outcome of your work, and that in the end, you have to fight for hours for basic resources for yourself. That experience is humiliating, and it's striping any agency or initiative away from you. Not to mention that poverty means increased crime rate, which brings you back to the collective trauma. So after opening of the European borders and before closing them down due to the coronavirus, the new Europe was still struggling with unequal respect and recognition. My own prospective advisor uh, told me in Warsaw that I have to deal with being from the worst part of Europe and I'm just not going to accept that narrative. Because if anything, I'm from the more experienced part of Europe, so listen to me, not the other way around. However, my, my point here is um, that there are still wounds to heal and they are real and they are affecting us. 
and they are due to the psychological damage of centrally planned economies and all that they encompass. So in itself, it is not really that traumatizing to have a shortage of a material good, unless it's severe. That's not the real problem here. What is traumatizing is being reduced to an object in a machine where you have no control over your life and you cannot foresee the end of this entanglement. So that's taking your human dignity away. So now let's imagine that there is a crisis and we need a swift response. Well, we don't have to imagine, we live in a pandemic. So we need capable entrepreneurs to take on the lead to figure out the new needs of consumers, such as testing kits for the virus, or mask supply chains. We, what we need is people who are self-reliant, who have the guts to be their own supervisor, who are confident to deal with the unpredictable. So if you are a machine in a centrally planned economy and you are detached from the results of your work, you are used to the idea that you cannot change anything and that you don't matter and that what you do doesn't matter and what you do will not change anything so you won't do it and if you live in a society without working rule of law where you have to pay your local mafia for any initiative or it will get dangerous then you won't do it you won't have any initiative you won't have any mental resources not to mention material ones so that is an important psychological reasons why free societies deal better with the unpredictable because people deal with their own lives and take responsibility for them, and they are not dependent on the outcome of some kind of external violence that is beyond their control. And also, and that is very important, free societies are therefore much happier. There is this term in psychology called the locus of control. It is defined as an individual's belief system regarding the causes of his or her experiences and the factors to which that person attributes success or failure. It can either be internal or external. So internal locus of control means you feel you are responsible for your own life. And in, and, um, in Aristotelian terms, you can flourish. People with internal locus of control are more healthy, more confident, and more successful. It is an, an inborn personality trait. However, know that any totalitarian regime stripes you of that and leaves you with external locus of control. So I want to make this a positive statement for the future, because there's a lot of gloomy history to research. But knowing the mechanism of control the nature of trauma. We can take better care of ourselves and if we have the right external conditions, we can exercise our own mindset to be more free, more self-aware and more initiative driven. So in a book called Neuroscience of Freedom and Creativity, Fulster argues that human liberty comes from the brain's ability to choose. And for that, we need healthy prefrontal cortex of our brain. And if we have that, then we have sharp attention, working memory, we are good decision makers, and we are capable of organizing goal-oriented actions. So it corresponds to creativity, to planning, imagination, and innovation. All that is important for the individual to go ahead, flourish as a unique person. We need to note that such mechanisms need generations to thrive, to create a long-standing culture. So we need generations of relative economic freedom, robust rule of law, to actually be able to actively live in that culture. Because traumas take a long time to heal, generations sometimes. So how all that relates to the current crisis? So we do need innovation to deal with a new situation. And it's a general statement that innovation thrives in liberty. I would even argue more so for psychological factors than for economic ones, although law and economics is a critically important framework. We see now a lot of state-driven initiatives to create products that might help, and some of them may be successful, of course, 
but we will never know at what cost. We could see that China does come up with productive solutions, but then we should ask ourselves, what is behind the curtain? What CCP really wants us to see? Who do you need to be in this society to be successful? Where do you need to stand in the party? Who decides on it? And what will they do to you if you are not obedient? So is having that product worth losing your sense of self and becoming a pawn of the CCP? And is that what productivity is about? Is that what life is about? So we need to remember there are places without proper legal framework. And these places are run by criminal institutions. And in such places, any individual initiative that is not subservient will be penalized. People that were raised in such societies will have troubles being on their own. And that is a kind of human tragedy, even if materially they are nowadays wealthy. So when it comes to the pandemic, the match is not over. And directly, it is a match with nature, which is a humbling experience. We see a lot of debatable policies being installed. And scarily, a lot of them can be implemented overnight. So, so suddenly we wake up to closed borders. And I won't discuss the measures against the current threats. We will all do it in a few years when we have actual data, when we have conducted research, when we know how this played out. And it may be, as it often is, that it turns out we have applied the worst solutions possible, but that we don't know now. What is scary is how after 9-11, the airports, they have changed forever and nobody challenges it now. So it could be that some measures that go against our personal and economic freedom won't vanish after this crisis. And as I said, we all exist on this spectrum between being treated as an object and as a human being. So if these measures push us more to being treated as objects, and if we don't protest it, and if we take it for granted, if we are fine with it, that's very bad news for humanity in general. And in the long run, in generations, it will backfire and it will negatively impact not only our economies, but most importantly, our own happiness and ability to live life for ourselves. So we have to make sure this doesn't happen and we are treated appropriately. Thank you for your attention and make sure to check out our other resources. Thanks.